Now, what is the meaning of functional group? Functional group. Now, we have, we have been classifying uh, organic compounds based on the structure of carbon atoms. Now, I want to classify them based on functional group. Now, what do we mean by functional group? Remember, when we classify them based on the, the structure of carbon atom, we're having aliphatic, alicyclic, aromatic, heterocyclic. So, all those uh, stuff can further be classified. We can say, okay, anyone that is a cycle, let's call it cyclic. Anyone that is a straight up branch, let's call it acyclic. You can further discuss, okay, anyone that is homogeneous, that is having the same or true, any cyclic that is homogeneous, let's say the cyclic compound, the, comp the carbon atom, eh? the carbon atom are the one forming the closed loop. Inside the closed loop, there's no other, any other atom that you can say that they are homocyclic. So out of those homocyclic, there are some that possesses aromatic latter, we call them aromatic uh, 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 compound, and others that don't possess aromatic character, we call them uh, alicyclic compound. Then, we have another one, heterocyclic, the one that have any other carbon atom inside the closed ring. Then, any heterocyclic that now tends to have aromatic character, we call it heteroaromatic, then others, is just uh, like that, as you can, something like uh, see it, but this one now. Want to classify this organic compound? Want to classify organic compound again now, based on their functional groups, not based on the structure, not based on structures now, based on functional group. Now, what is let's therefore define functional group so that we know what we are doing here. Now, what is functional group? Now, a functional group is an atom or group of atoms or a bond. Common to a homologous series. This thing I'm talking about now is common to a homologous series. I will show you the meaning of homologous series. Maybe in our next class. Common to a homologous series. And which determines the main chemical property of that series. What we are saying is that this thing we call a functional group can be an atom, can be a bond, can be a group of atom, and so on. And this stuff is the one that tells us the main chemical property. Of that uh, series, you want to give the main. This is why this is is that this is the reason why this uh, particular series of compound behave this way. This is the reason why they behave this way. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, that is it. So that's what we are saying. You see, uh, for example, now let's say number one. Look at some examples we have here. We have our canes. You see, this one we call them our canes is because. They are uh, part of, yes, we already do that. But the difference between these arcanes, arcanes, and arcanes is, is just this bond. You can see it. This one is having single bond. This one is having double bond. This one is having triple bond. That's just the that is major difference between them. The reason why we call this one saturated, unsaturated, unsaturated, because it's triple, double, and single. Bond between their carbon carbon atoms. That's what I'm trying to see. Now let's look at this archais. Archais. Archais, I already said, is when this arcane loses one hydrogen. Archais group are formed when this arcane, not arcane, so when arcanes, for example, now all the arcanes like methane, ethane, propane, butane, pentane, hexane. Heptin, octane, nonate, decay, uh, 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 on decay, do decay, and so on. When they lose this one hydrogen, the aim will change to I. It will not be uh, metai, ethai, pentai, butai, propai, uh, 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 pentai, uh, hezai, heptai, optai, nonai, decay, and so on. That's what I'm trying to say. If they lose just one hydrogen. If butane loses one hydrogen, become butyl. If a methane loses one hydrogen, become methyl, <laughs> and so on. That's what we are trying to say. That's what we are trying to say. Now, what about the next one? Halogens. Now, we use a. You, you remember halogens? You can remember halogens? You can remember halogens? Now, halogens are the group seven elements, which are the fluorine, chlorine, uh, 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 iodines, or. Uh, uh, bromine, so on. So those are uh, 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 halogens. So we have 
haloakins. That is halogen and akins joined together. For example, now uh, 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 chloroethene, uh, chloroethene, and so all those things we say chloroethene, chlorodes, fluorodes, uh, bromodes, and so on. We mention bromo. You mention uh, any akins. That's what we call them halo, not halo, call it halo akins. That's what I'm trying to say. So they have one, they must have a chi group and halogen attached to them. Remember, this a chi group. We, we start from methyl to uh, uh, when you have it. They will have alkanols or alcohols. Alcohols must have OH. Now, anywhere you see arrow in this place now, in organic chemistry, most places you see arrow are always a chi. C N H two N plus one because plus two is supposed to be a K. If you remove one from two, it become plus one. So anyway, you see arrow here now. Arrow is not even the functional group. No, arrow just means a chi group. The functional group are ah, those stuff you are seeing there. Those stuff you are seeing. There. This ones you are seeing. That is main functional group. But there must be a chi group attached to them. Uh -huh. So the functional group now will tell us how the compounds, how the compound will behave. Um, attached to this acai group. That's what I'm trying to say. So, in case you say a, a question, they say which of them is the functional group for, uh, let's say, alcohols. You see OH there. It's very correct. Even though there's no arrow. And this there's, there's a bond good to that arrow. So, how do you know all this? You just identify them. Anyway, you see them, you should know. Anyway, you see OH now, you should know that it is alcohol. It's for alcohols or alcohols. Then uh, uh, we have uh, uh, nitrice, which is CN. I just write like this. This one is just like structural, uh, some are structural, some are molecular. Structural means the one that will show the bonds, all the bonds there. That's what I'm trying to say. The one that will show all the bonds there are uh, structural. Take care of that. So you can see it. We have amines. That's amines. Now you can see we have. Two amine arrow one, we have two here. That is three arrows. Now, one thing about this amine is that they can be in secondary form, primary form, or tertiary form. Now, this is the functional group. Arrows, you can see, okay, just bond. Bond should be here to show that there's a chi group there. Anyway, you see, something like, maybe you see CN, there's bond here. There's no arrow. means that there's always a chi group there. Anyway, you see bond, there's a chi group. If it's hydrogen, they'll put the hydrogen there. But if you see just a bond, uh, in functional group, o, but there's no nothing there. It should be like there should be an archive group. There. That is that is the right way to write it. This one means now. This means we have other archive groups here. This one now means this one is attached to other archive groups. Or maybe this one now. If you attach this one to hydrogen now, an archive group. Uh, if it's metal, you will just form a uh, or methane. That's how it is. But if you attach one to other archive groups, it's better that way. And that's what I'm trying to see. So this, if you have just one alkyl group here, then two hydrogen here. If this arrow is H2, just one alkyl group will be present. That is primary amide. If you have two alkyl group, but one hydrogen atom will be there. Maybe this one is two now. Maybe this one, then you have one arrow here. The other arrow will be two. It will be H. You know, let me see arrow, then H here. Then just not arrow two, just one arrow and one hydrogen. Just now have two archive groups, this one and one here. Yeah. Not this one will be two. That is called secondary amide. But if you have something like this, which is having the arrow here and another two arrow here, which is three arrow, archive group, that is a tertiary amide. We have TO, which is SH, OSH, that is sulfur and hydrogen. We have ETAS, which is arrow, O, arrow. This, this two, both of them are archive group. Uh -huh. Because they're not acousies. Then we have aldehyde. Aldehyde. Uh, which is this. You can see it. If you have two alkyl group, it will be ketos. You have alkyl group here, alkyl group here. And the uh, oxygen will be ketos. Uh -huh. So uh, when you are the alcohols, when you are primary alcohol, now you're going to have this. You can see. Uh, look at this OH. Huh? You see OH. You can see. This one is O. This one is H. You can see arrow uh, C. Uh -huh. This one now we have C inside this arrow. 
If you extend this arrow, you see I have more C's there. Uh -huh. But you may not be able to get this because this and this are not the same. Because they have different functional group. But this was gotten from this place by oxidation. If you exercise it, you don't have this. When you exercise primary, we have primary alcohols, secondary alcohols, tertiary alcohols. See, just follow this. If you have a, a, a maybe like a carbon now, uh, bonded to this functional group, but having two alkyl group, this carbon, if it's having two alkyl group, is a, 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 a secondary. If it's having just one alkyl group, it's primary. So if you're if you oxidized primary alcohols, you're going to have an aldehyde. Hmm? You're going to have aldehyde. That's what you are going to have. Or acana. You should call it acana. Then you call it aldehyde or you call it acana. That's a dandy for it. When you oxidize what? Primary alcohols. Primary alcohol will have one alkyl group. You have one alkyl group. Take care of that. It's very, very important. So let's look at other functional group we may have. Uh, you can see we have ketos. I already told you. If you check, it's like the, the aldehyde we did before. But it's not having two alkyl group. Just the difference between this one and aldehyde is just that this one has two alkyl group, but that one have just one. And the other one is hydrogen. That's just the difference between the two. Uh, this one is also got it from uh, partial oxidation of uh, alcohol. Partial oxidation, not just full oxidation of uh, like alcohol. But so you take note of that. It's very, very important. It's very, very important. We have carboxylic acid, which is something like all those alkanoic acid. You got the functional group. The functional group. It can be, it can be ROCOH. That is also correct. ROCOOH. Without you know this, but you know, just structural form of this uh, functional group. The structural form. When all the bonds are now uh, being shown. So this one is esters. Because it's a like check very well. It's called that this ester and the carboxylic acid are almost alike. This carboxylic acid is having hydrogen here, but this is also having having two alkyl groups. So you just you check very well. Esters and and this carboxylic acid, carboxylic acid all those are carboxylic like ec, like ethanoic acid. That's what I'm trying to say. Oic, you have an oic group. That's what I try to say. Then uh, this one is esters like oit. Like I can do it, I can do it. That's what I try to say. It's from ethers. It's not from that. So this is the functional group of that, which is R O C O O R. But this one is R O C O O H. That is very different between them. Take note of that. It's very very important. Both of them are the same. This one that gets one. So all these things are very easy to know, and because most of them are always alike. So I'm going to show you more now through slides. Not through maybe writing up or this stuff. I'm going to show you more of this version of the two slides where so you see them and uh, be able to identify them. Yeah. All right. These are examples of uh, some functional group. You can see for akine, akines, and the akine, and their formulas. Akine has just a uh, uh, one, just a single bond. You can see that. Then akin has akin has two, then two, which is double bond. I can have triple bonds. You can see any benzene derivative you have must have a benzene ring. So a benzene ring. Then uh, we have halo akins. You can see them. That X means uh halogen. Then arrow means an alkyl group. For example, then we have a. Uh, uh, Furac uh, akin, kurakin, bromo akins, and so on. You can see we have alcohol, you can see the functional group here, ROOH. We have carbonine function, it's carbonine group, we have CO. We have the ketos, aldehyde, we already explained this. Uh, a cyhelite. Then we have uh, carbonates. Carboxylate, you can see there this thing. Carboxylic acid, you can see the functional group of carboxylic acid. Then esters and uh, so on. We have a. Uh, you can see there. We have uh, eaters. Although we have already explained all these ones. We have amide, amidine, amides. We have the primary amide, secondary amide, tertiary amide. The trend is just that one have a. Uh, uh, the primary have one alkyl group, the secondary have two alkyl groups, the tertiary have uh, three alkyl group. Have synanates, have the synanates, you can see them. 
we have the nitrate nitri and the nitrites so that's my nitrosuzy see nitrosuzy we have a nitrite look at nitrite here we have isonitrite we have nitrate we have isocyanide and the c and it see them there so any as many you can just say uh, capture just catch up there it's very very important these are the functional groups we have here I see them we have so many of them we have so many of them we have so many of them so try your best to grab as many you can grab all right you can see this this is an example of a uh, secondary amides you have two arrow which is an archive group you have to act this is an example of a uh, primary amides you have just one archive group which is just one arrow others the is just an hydrogen then at this is an example of a tertiary amide because you have three acry group archive group means that arrow i already explained that so you can see some uh, examples of a uh, functional groups that we have here you can see the one of alcohol the structure of the functional group and the formula itself arrow oh and arrow you can see the bond the the structure will show you the bond why the formula will just show you the uh uh, uh stuff that makes up that uh, functional group we have the kettles kettles are also what uh what do you call what is another thing for kettle a canons we have a canal which is id hard you can see the functional group although we already uh, checked that we have carboxylic acid, canoic acids, and we have ethers. You can see the difference between ethers and esters. You can see them. You can see the difference between the two. Just one oxygen is in ethers, but for esters, have two oxygens. You can see them. You can see the stuff there. So we have a. Uh, uh, if we eat ourselves, you cannot see any carbon, okay, carbon atom there. But for esters, there's a carbon atom there. We have amide. You can see them. You can see that amide. We have a. The primary I already explained okay we have primary amines uh, we have amide you can see that for amide amide and amines are not the same take note of that still very very important all right you can see some uh, functional group you have the identifying scenes I love this one because this one classified alcohols as primary secondary and tertiary you can see them Primary has one acai group, secondary has two acai group, then the tertiary have three acai group. Anything primary, secondary, tertiary, they only look like this. So amines, alcohol, and amides. So take care of that. Although these are what we have been looking at, it's better you look at it over and over again. That's how you, you just because you need to identify, be familiar with them. Anyway, you see them, you should be able to recognize them. That is the major thing in functional group. You should be able to recognize them. That is the major thing. can see you can see we have ketos carboxylic acid carbonate function esters amide primary amine uh, secondary amine tertiary amine nitrite this nitrite some produce we call it cyanide cyanide somebody call not cyanide to cyanide then the we have uh, amino acid, you can see amino acid, functional group of amino acid, akins, you can see them, trans akins, you can see them. This one will show you the, the all those trans and the seeds asomas. You can see trans and seeds. When so when we are the uh stuff the same stuff are in opposite direction, opposite side. It's called trans. When they're in the same side, it's called seeds. You can see it there. Very, very important. Although we have already checked this, um, just view it again. I want you to be seeing it over and over again. Because that is the best way to get them. We have the amine, imine, imide, azide, azul, C and it, nitrate. Although we have already looked at this. We look at all these ones. We looked at all these ones. So I want you guys to something like be familiar with them. I hope you can see that formula. That's what you check. Oh, formula that is the functional group that we are talking about. That formula 
Now you will see their structure. If you view this, you see that I don't want it to be seeing structures. I want you to just get the formula. That is the major thing there. You can also see their structures here. Uh, I'll be checking structures because structures structures are too complex to get. The formula is very simple to get. So I want you to take note of this all this sulfur, this sulfur group. These ones are for sulfur. Anything that contains sulfur, that's what we are looking at now. That's your SH disulfide, sulfide, tio eaters. Sure, you just I mean, try your best to something like a uh, grab all this soft core group, grab most of them. Try this disulfide, tio, sulfide, fuzide, so full, sulfonic acid, tio cyanide, tio keto, tia, tio esters. They are somehow important. Also take note of that phosphine, RO3P. Take note of that one, it's still very, very important. All those phosphonic acid, phosphate, that is phosph uh, phosphate. Phosphate, so that you see them very well. Let me show you so that you see them very well. Those phosphate and the uh, phosphone dieters, esters. So take note of them. Just get their formula if you can. They are very, very important. All right, this for group containing boron. Boron, can see boronic acid, boronic esters, boronic acid, boronic esters. There are just the four we can see identify it in this place. Just check the difference between the uh, four stuffs we have in here. Check the one that show esters, ester has a uh, two alkyl group. The one that show the acid has just OH, which is just one alkyl group. So the all those things, these things are something like something simple to identify. And boronic is just a, a OH1, then bo boronic is OH, then 2. That is 2 OH. The same thing with this start. R -O, -E o R is T2. Just check that and check them. Uh, this is a functional group now containing metals. Three metals. And we have the Akai, Lithium, Akai, Magnesium, Halide. We have Akai, Aluminium. Uh -huh. We have um, Celai Esters, Eters, not Esters, Celai Eters. So, I don't know if you have seen that, uh, uh, something like a car aluminum before. And that's Ziegler Natas Catalyst. That's Ziegler Natas uh, Catalyst. I don't know if you have heard about that name before.